Oh, it's nice. Beautiful day today. Peaceful, relaxing. I should come out here more often. <laughs> Somehow I get caught up on doing other things that I get sidetracked. Maybe a little distracted. But now that it's noon, for me, it's been kind of an interesting morning of doing different things that I wanted to do, and get done, and pretty much accomplished them. There's still things I'm working on, things I'm enjoying. Have you ever thought to, first of all, I should ask you, do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Do you have a husband or a wife? Do you have any children? One of those you should have. <laughs> Somewhere in there you have to have one of them, maybe. You know, or say even if you were a spinster or say some of you were virgins or you know you were not married or you're just not going to get married or whatever, maybe. Okay, say even to the Lord, but let's just for the sake of argument, think of someone that you might have said, I love you to. Now, what if, let's say, oh, today, you told someone you love them? You know, and they said, cool, you know, and they responded with a happy smile, and, you know, you, you said it with such good feelings and emotion that they believed you. They thought, wow, that's neat. You know, and so they were like, thrilled, you know, because you told them that you loved them. Well, what would happen if you waited for a full year before you told your wife again that you love her, that you didn't speak to her in the meantime, that you went out of your way to avoid or to not say the words, I love you, to your wife? How'd that work out for you? What about your kids? What would happen if you never told your kids you loved them, except once, and then you do it next year? Same time, next year, but you don't do it in the meantime. You don't say to them, I love you. What do you think would happen? Would you marry somebody that never said I love you, except once a year? Would you have a relationship with someone that you never spoke to except once a year to say I love you? I wonder. Do you think we do that with God at times? Do you think your relationship with God is as active as it should be? Or do you put him on the back burner? Do you kind of put him on the slow burn, you know, just to keep him away because you, uh, when you were in need, you cried out to God and it was very adamant and very real. It's like, God, help me. But then the rest of the time, what have you done? Have you just kind of like said, ah, pshaw, God knows I love him. I don't have to tell him. You think your wife would go for that? She knows. Of course she knows. I don't have to tell her. She knows. God knows. I don't have to tell him. He knows. Do you think that's what life is meant to be? Kind of pushing God out of the picture? To not be too spiritually minded that you're no earthly good? Because a lot of people say that. We don't want to be so spiritually minded we're no earthly good. We need to, you know, like have balance. We have to have, you know, a certain amount of practical reality because we don't want God invading our practical life, do we? Good question. And in the morning, long before daylight, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Mark 135. Jesus. Seek God early. When Jesus told us to abide in him and in his word, he used the Greek word, meno, which is translated in Strong's Concordance as to continue or to dwell, to endure, to be present, to remain, and to stand, to tarry. We are to spend time with God continually, not once in a blue moon, not once a week, 
not once an hour, not once every five minutes, continually. In other words, there's a continuation of process that can go on if you would just accept that he is the all the omnis. You know the omnis, come on now, let's be real. Omnipresent, omniscient, omni this, omni that, omni everywhere, just big. Just more than what you know, you think you know about God. He is all of whatever. All encompassing, all powerful, all knowing, all seeing, all being, all everything. And he's all loving. So, do you think kind of like touching base once in a while is really a good idea? Or do you think maybe you should be continually spending time with God? Now, I don't know about you, but me personally, I'm a screw up. <laughs> I can mess something up in five minutes. If you just leave me alone, man, I'll make a mess out of that and I'll get right back into it and I'll try to fix it and I'll try to clean it up. And usually I'll do a pretty good job cleaning it up. But you know what? I didn't have to make that mess. Now, did I? I didn't have to get into it, you know, and really kind of like go, oh, I got this, God, I'll do it myself. <laughs> uh, never mind, God, could you take over? Help. You see, I want God continually. <laughs> I want him to tell me, hey, Michael, turn left. And I'm not going to ask why, because <laughs> I'm turning left. My wife knows that. If I think something's wrong, man, we're... What are you doing? I'm going back home. What do you mean? Well, I feel like everything's wrong, man. I don't know what's wrong, but I know that I'm going the wrong direction at the wrong time and in the wrong place, and it ain't right. Whatever it is, I'm going home, and I'm starting over, and I'm praying. Because <laughs> I know that if her and I go out on the road in the car together, and if we haven't really talked to God about it, you know, it's kind of like once we get out there, man, all hell breaks loose, or all hell breaks loose on us, or comes at us. It's like, man, what is wrong here? And I know. I didn't talk to God about it. He had a plan for me, and I'm kind of like in the wrong place. <laughs> uh, so I've chosen to not do that, and I'd rather go His way. Because, you know, I have grace. Now, what that means is that I really can do anything I want to do. I can go out and do anything. I really can some things, you know, I don't want to do because I'm going to have to pay the price. You know, some things are going to cost me, you know, a little bit of, you know, cost or a big cost. But either way, it's costing me. So, rather than have something cost me, I'd rather have something bless me. I'd rather reap than have to endure what I've sown and reap what I sow. <laughs> I'd rather get the benefits. I'd rather get the bennies than to get the... Uh, teachings <laughs> the hard way so I would rather continually hear from God I'd rather continually walk with God I'd rather always talk with God I don't want to make prayer into you know a set time where I have to just get up in the morning only and okay God I got it I'm on my way Whew. you know and forget that you know five minutes down the road I haven't a clue what God just said even if I did paste a note on my forehead Oh, wait a minute, that's phylacteries, never mind. <laughs> we call them tefillin. We are not told just to wish for everything to work together. We are told to seek God for a fresh word each day. If we seek Him early in the day, we will have a word in due season to share with others. See Proverbs 15, 23. We can succeed at what God calls us to do if we listen for his instructions. He has said, if you seek me early and diligently, you will find me. See Proverbs 8.17. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will give to my wounds, O oh, Lord, consider my meditations. Hearken unto the voice of my cry. 
my King and my God, for unto Thee will I pray, my voice shalt Thou hear in the morning, O oh Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto Thee. Man, if I could sing that out of key and out of tune, I'm sure that you could do it and get up in the morning and pray. That's Psalm 5, by the way. And some of us know who wrote it. And we know the story behind it. We're blessed by it. But from there, not the music. But the point being, if you seek to spend time with God in the morning, before the day starts, he may lay out your entire day for you, like a day planner. Because he is called the day star and the morning star. And I think he's also called the bright and shining star. But anyways, he's got you covered because he's the star of the show. So if you just want to live a life that's a lot better than what you're going to, you want to maybe laugh more than I do. <laughs> that ought to be interesting because I get a kick out of some of the stupid things people do. <laughs> I don't think you can laugh more than I do. I laugh at some of the stupid things I do. <laughs> but if you want to enjoy life in a easier way, a more content way, a more abundant way, and I think you'll have to find that you need to pray early in the morning. Or when I say pray, I mean you need to have conversation with God all through the day. Morning, noon, and night I will seek thee, David cried out in the Psalms and the songs. And you can choose to sing to him or to talk to him or to walk with him or to, you know, do what you want. But however you do it, if you do it with a true heart, if you do it with sincere attitude with the real direction that you want to and you know what's going to happen not only will God meet you because he will you know not only will he tell you you know this is what's going on today or this is what I want you to do but you're going to find yourself changing you're going to find you'll be rearranging I mean he, he'll be rearranging you but you won't realize it but you'll be rearranged on your insides that one day all of a sudden it'll start to affect your outsides and you kind of go man I never was a morning person before <laughs> now I get a kick out of it <laughs> well, let that be a lesson to my wife because she's not a morning person <laughs> boy <laughs> she wants to be alone with God please <laughs> But for me, I'm pretty joyful in the morning. Pretty happy. You know? Most of the time, I'm pretty happy. But the time I am blessed the most is when I just stop. Don't have to say a word. Don't have to think a word because I have a real, such a neat relationship with the Lord that Him and I, you know, I'll, I'll just start thinking and he'll start, you know, kind of. And then I just kind of feel like it and it's kind of like. And that's kind of. A well. <laughs> and I don't have to say nothing. I don't have to say a word. Because you know what? I like being a Christian. And I like knowing Jesus. And I really I really enjoy my father. How about you?